Hello, my tubies, TikTokers, and Instagram. Sheila True Love here with you. By the way, you know, I'm going to be on Clapper. They have a new um, uh, I, uh, 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 app. It's called Clapper. It's like TikTok. And it's nice. It's really, really good. So don't forget to go on Clapper also to check out some of my videos because it's good. What I'm going to share with you right now for educational purposes and after this clip, I'm definitely going to leave my commentary and share my commentary with you. And it's, you know, where we could discuss this. This is for discussion purposes, discussion. Now you have so many women who are doing very well financially and their husbands or their partners are not doing as well. And the moment the partner, the man, he makes a little bit of money, he expects for the woman to give up her career She's making, let's say, 20000 every month. Every month. Okay? She's an entrepreneur. He's making way less than that. And then finally, he makes $17,000 this particular month. We don't even know if that's going to be consistent. But anyway, let me share this clip with you. And then I'll come back with my commentary. Hold on. This is my beautiful kid that I was sharing with you. He is amazing. We have to talk about this story that I recently saw, and I'm about to play it for you in just a minute, but I got to give you some backstory first. So the wife was making routinely $20,000 a month. Like she was making a really good living on her own before she got with her husband. Now she has two kids with her husband, a 16-month-old and a four-week-old. She's trying to juggle being a mom, a wife, and an entrepreneur. Now her husband, for the very first time ever, just had his biggest month of $17,000. I want you to see what he's asking of her, and I want you to let me know if you think that it's fair. Last month, I made more money than I've ever made in my life. I brought home $17,000. And the way it was received wasn't the way that I would have liked it to have been received. I wasn't prepared for how much this unconscious idea of the role I should play as a woman and the role he should play as a man would affect our relationship. I was not prepared for that. Rami, let me say something to you. There's some fear. There's some fear with being direct with my wife. I want to be heard. I want to be heard. I want to say this one thing that I've been trying to say and have her hear me. I'll make it very plain. I need love from you, respect. I need food. And I just need clean clothes. That's it. You need me to be a housewife. So here's my thing. If she's making $20,000 a month with her business and his business is starting to take off and he's got about $17,000 his first month making that, can't y'all well afford to have somebody else come in to cook and clean? Why does it have to be her that does it? It's, it's not just about the act itself. It's about him wanting a certain kind of wife, but that wasn't the kind of wife that he married. He married an entrepreneurial businesswoman, but now he's trying to turn her into a housewife. And he doesn't seem to care or even notice that that's not exactly what she wants. Not every woman wants to be home with the kids, cooking and cleaning and doing laundry. Some women want to be able to balance it and do both. They don't want to feel like they had to give up their dream in order to have a relationship relationship with a man like she was already doing these things and i need clean clothes and i need food is she the only one on earth who can make that happen for you would you really look at her as less of a mom and less of a wife if she doesn't do those if she's not the one if it's not by her hand even if she's not the one cutting the check you need to see her scrubbing the toilet you need to see her folding the laundry you need to see her flipping the pancakes like i just I just, I hate the idea that women are always expected to, not always, but some women are expected to give up everything they had before, their entire identity prior to meeting a man, because now they met you, child, that's over. It's a wrap. Put a fork in it, it's done. And it's like, 
I just don't understand how he doesn't understand how selfish his request is and how much stress and turmoil it's putting her through. She said she feels like she's failing at being a mother. She feels like she's failing at being a wife. Feel like she's failing in her business. And instead of him saying, the last thing I want to do is add to that stress. You just had a baby four weeks ago. Instead, he is piling on. Like, since you already stressed, put this on top. I don't think that it's just about her cooking and cleaning. I think it's about him wanting to feel the respect of a man who takes care of all the bills, of a man who makes all the money. And the only way he can get that level of respect is if he has all the finances and she has to come to him. He wants a certain subservient, submissive attitude that only him making money and her not making money will get him. It takes a very secure man to be in a relationship with an independent woman because she doesn't need you, she wants you. And some men can only be in a relationship where they feel needed. And I feel like that's what he's going through. But he's trying to create or to manufacture this situation, this scenario, where he can feel needed. So she, he's, he's basically asking his wife, I need you to shrink so that I can feel bigger and more powerful. I, I only thrive in an environment where I feel like I'm above someone. And you're out here acting like you're my equal. Feeling like you have to give up parts of yourself in order to be in a relationship with somebody else, whether it's now or later, that's going to eventually wear on you. That you're only a shell of who you once were before this person. And he shouldn't even feel comfortable asking his wife to shrink so that he could feel more comfortable in a relationship with her. This isn't about cooking. This isn't about cleaning. This is about you got a little too much power around here. And I'm the man. And that job's supposed to be mine. Uh, you know, uh, this uh, with the man talking about he wants to pay for everything and take care of everything. I, you already know where I stand because I made several videos in terms of this. I'm a 50-50 type of girl because I'm not a foolish woman. I'm not stupid. My mother didn't raise a fool. Jesus Christ didn't raise a fool. Jehovah and Jesus didn't raise a fool. And no, I'm not. No. Now, I keep thinking about the Proverbs 31 because I'm a Christian. I'm not a fake, phony Christian. I'm not a fanatical Christian either like the Pharisees. I keep it all the way real. Now, as a Christian, we know that all scriptures is inspired by God. And anytime God is telling us the way we should see things and the way that we should live, he has the right to do that because he created us, he designed us. Now let's look at what the Bible constitutes to be a perfect wife. What does the Bible constitute to be a perfect mother? You can find that at Proverbs chapter 31 all day long. But you'll notice in Proverbs chapter 31, this wife was not no stay-at-home mother. She was not no stay-at-home wife. She also had, this is the clincher. This is the important part. Listen in, pull yourself in. She had maidservants. You see, today we call them maids or we call them nannies. She had people in the home who was helping her. She wasn't doing all of the things that you see described that she was doing by herself. She went out into the marketplace. She went out into, to, into the business. This was a businesswoman. She didn't have time to be sitting around just cooking and cleaning and taking care of kids and taking care of a man. Mm -mm. This is a woman that was out there wheeling and dealing a hustler. She was buying up land. She was buying up property. She had money to bring to the table. At the same time, she was not overworked. She had made servants. Go get your Bible. Don't run. I mean, don't walk. I want you to run and get your Bible. And read it from the King James. Read it from the, this is the best way to read it. Contemporary English and the easy read version. I suggest you get the Bible app that's called the U version because it has several different translations. And yeah, different translations. So, Check out what a good wife, all women are going out here talking about they want to be a good wife. You want to be a good mother. Well, learn how to be a good wife and be a good mother according to what the Bible says, especially 
if you're a Christian woman or you claim to be, you profess to be, then follow the guidelines of what a good wife and a perfect and a, and a good mother is. Follow that. She was not no stay at home, dependent on no man. She was not no stay at home mother. She had a maid servant, honey, to come and take care of those kids. Are you kidding me? So when you're dealing with these men who want you to have their children, first of all, he better have a good income. Because a lot of these men don't make enough money to have a wife and children. We know, according to the Bible, that a man is supposed to be the provider. And that don't mean materially, just materially. He's supposed to provide for that family and that household spiritually. And anytime you find a man who's not going to provide, number one, spiritually, that should be a deal breaker. That's a huge red flag because that's not a man who really cares about his children. We know the type of world that we live in. We know there's THC, everybody's a dope head. You have crystal meth. You have crack cocaine. You have heroin. You have pill poppers and all of this freaking these, these pills that everybody's freaking out on. And this is the kind of world that you send your children out into. Should those children not be prepared to know how to battle each and every thing that comes up against them? And they need to battle that. Jesus Christ said, I am the truth. I am the way. I am the life. So if you want your children to know the proper way, and you want your children to live based on the truth, Jesus Christ is the way. Teach your children about Jesus Christ and how he had respect for his heavenly father, Jehovah God, Yahweh, Jesus, Yeshua. That's the most important thing that you should be focusing on. Secondly, what type of provider and what kind of money does this man make if he wants me to have his children, because you're going to have to go on maternity leave. You're going to have to fall back as a wife and a mother for a minute. So you need to be able to have maid servants like the Proverbs 31. She had a nanny, you know, giving birth to a child and raising children. You have postpartum. Sometimes a mother after giving birth, she has postpartum. I had that with my second child, Lewis, my first babe, daughter, I didn't have postpartum, but I damn sure did the second child. Postpartum is when you are so depressed after having the child, it's dangerous to have you around the child because that's the mothers that you heal that kill their kids. I looked at my son at one time and I didn't have very good thoughts. Let me tell you, but considering my mom, thank you, Jehovah. Thank you, Jesus. My mother was there to help me understand what this thing was. So she stepped up. She watched, I, but my postpartum didn't last long. Actually, my postpartum, I think it lasts like an hour, not even an hour because when I had those feelings and I knew it was postpartum, I didn't know at the time that was the name of it, but I knew I just didn't want to take care of him. I didn't want to hold him. I didn't want to do anything. But then when they brought him into the room and, and they had him laying there, <coughs> I looked at him and I didn't have it, that motherly instinct, you know, love. I just said, I'm not picking him up. I'm not even going to feed him. But then I looked at him for a while. I looked away for, I don't know, maybe 25 minutes or 30 minutes. And then I looked at him again. And when he was laying there, let me tell you what got me past that postpartum thing. He was so helpless. And I said, look at him, you know, he have no one to take care of him. He has nothing. He has no one. So, you know, I, I just said no. And then I went and I grabbed my baby. I grabbed him and I hold him tight, you know, but I still had hormonal stuff that I was going through. Do men understand that? Nope. They don't get it. They never will. They never will. But you have some women whose postpartum, it lasts for months. 
And they need to have someone who was like my mother who stepped in. My mother came home with me. She saw what I, I went through in the beginning. She said she recognized my mother had six children, five boys, and I'm the only girl. So she knew what was up. Who helped her get through her postpartum back then? Nobody. Back then, nobody knew about bipolar. Nobody knew about freaking schizophrenia, ADHD, ADD. And I'm sure some of my brothers had some of those things. And my mom, she had to just be a, the most amazing person on the planet. She had to know how to handle each and every one of these situations. She had a nervous breakdown. We ended up in a shelter. I was in a shelter, whatever, you know, and I went through my stuff, but I never focused on the things my mom did wrong. I focused on everything that beautiful, amazing lady did right because she's not perfect. She had her own mental issues and her own things that she was battling. So when these adult children grow up, they need to keep that in mind. But back to women being expected to give up their careers and their goals to be in a marriage and have a husband and motherhood. No, that's not correct. Hold on a moment. You know, that's not right. Especially when you have a woman who's, she's anointing. Her anointing is she's a businesswoman. She's smart as hell. That's me, honey. I am so not <clears throat> the stay-at-home wife type of girl. I'm very organized. Don't get it twisted. My house is always tidy, organized, clean, and, and I make things easy for myself. Was I a good mother? No. I was a great mother. Was I a perfect mother? No. I made my mistakes. I had issues with alcohol, but since I'm no longer a Jehovah's Witness, I was a Jehovah's Witness for 55 years. And you have 75, 70 to 75% of Jehovah's Witnesses who are either full-blown alcoholics or they have, they're battling alcohol issues. And I had a battle with alcohol and it caused me to do things that was not always at the best interest of, of my children. I made mistakes. But the beauty of me is like the Apostle Paul. Think about the Apostle Paul. He used to kill Christians and persecute Christians. You know, because he thought what he was doing was right. Everything that I was doing with my children, I thought that it was right or I responded not wisely. And usually that was when I was under the influence of alcohol. But now that I'm not like that, I feel the same way that the Apostle Paul feels at Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. The Apostle Paul said, I no longer live in the past. You know, I had to put the past behind me. He says that he focuses on the future and the goals that he set before him. Can you imagine if the Apostle Paul kept beating himself over the things that he did in the past? He would have never achieved all the things that Jehovah and Jesus wanted him to achieve. Now, if Jehovah God and Jesus Christ have forgiven you, then you need to forgive yourself and work hard to do better. That's all we can do as parents. We can only try to do better because none of us can go back and change the past. That's not possible. Like me, as long as I see a person continuing to try, they haven't given up and say, oh, the hell with it. Look, I drink, I'm a druggie. I'm just going to, what a, it is what it is. No. When I see someone in therapy, when I see someone joining support groups, when I see someone who's trying, who's putting in the work and they're trying to change, I'm going to work with you. I'm going to be just like Jesus Christ, Jehovah and Jesus Christ. I'm not going to give up on you. I am going to work with you. Why? Because nine times out of 10, you're worth it. Jehovah God and Jesus Christ sees us. And he sees us, you're worth fighting for because you haven't given up. But like I said, with these women who are expected, give up your freaking dreams and you are just a powerhouse. You are a woman who you have a brain. Check it out. You have a brain. My IQ, the last time I checked my IQ, I think it was 153 or something like that. I took my IQ test a while back. 
I am nobody's dumb woman. I'm not supposed to be sitting up in no damn house just being a wife and a mother when I can do so much more when it comes to business. I am an entrepreneur. I also have been in the legal, uh, the legal field for well over 30, 30 years, 35 years. Legal, baby. You got to have a brain that works to do things that I do. I'm also an advice coach. And I'm proud to say this is a beautiful thing where people actually pay. They pay to talk to Sheila True Love. I work on a donation basis, so I don't have to file my that, that on my taxes. And it's, it's, it's like a little loophole. But I work on donation basis, and I have people blowing up my email. I have people sending me text messages all the time where they want advice. I never said I'm a life coach. I don't, I'm not a life coach. I'm an advice. I'll give you my advice, sweetheart. It's up to you whether you choose to adhere to it or not. And I've had people send me, oh my God, money that I never expected. Not really. But I appreciate it so much. And I say, keep it coming. I have emails. And once the money hits my cash app or my PayPal, I get right on it, setting up an appointment, when we're going to talk, and when I get back to you on your email. And I'm a very busy lady. I have three jobs. I also wrote a book. I have my second book, who it's finished, and I'm just doing my editing on it. I do a lot of reading, a lot of research, so that I can be of help to all the ones who are hurting out there and all the ones who are looking to be healed. And that's why I do what I do. It comes from my last name, my synonym name, True Love. I truly, truly love you. That's why I do my videos. That's why I do what I do. And um, let's just listen to this and I'll make my commentary as we go along. Uh, and I'm about to play it for you in just a minute, but I got to give you some backstory first. So the wife. This is I would have liked it to have been received. I wasn't prepared for how much. Hold on a moment, honey. We're going to go back to what this man More wants. money than I've ever made. Oh, my thing is this man also says that he wants to come home to a clean house and he wants a home-cooked meal. He wants somebody who's going to cook and clean. What? What's wrong with him? She's not his mother. You know, you can call your mom because moms, most of the time, They'll be loving the fact that my son is calling me because he wants my help. I will be glad to come over and clean up the place, son, and have your meal cooked and do your laundry and have your clothes laid out as and pick up behind you. That's what mothers do. They get pleasure. I, I know I did. I had no problem with my son didn't let me do all of that, though. He just was a very independent person. And my daughter, too. They're not feeling all of that. But I would have no problem with it. Doing my son's laundry, cook, cooking for my son, cleaning up f w behind him because he's working like a crazy career. My children, both of them have careers. That's very time consuming, exhausting. My daughter's a, a registered nurse. My son is a social worker, a counselor and a therapist. And sometimes he's on call even on the weekends when he's supposed to be resting. No, I wouldn't have no problem doing that for my kids. But you know, you are this man's wife. You're not his mother picking up behind him, cooking, doing all the cooking. He knows how to cook or he should go on YouTube, son. It'll teach you how to cook everything you need to, anything that you want to eat. He knows how to do his laundry. If not, YouTube can show you that too. I love YouTube University and TikTok because it will show you and educate you on how to do anything that you're interested in. You're not his mother. This is why you have so many marriages that the, the, the passion, it just burns out. And you have this. Let me show you what you end up with. This is what you end up with. This is his book, you see? The sex-starved wife. Because he no longer sees you as a wife. He sees you as his mama. Yeah, you pick up behind me, clean up behind me, cooking for me, being a slave, a house slave. Yeah, come on now. 
Now, her husband, for the very first time ever, just had his biggest month of $17,000. I want you to see what he's asking of her, and I want you to let me know if you think that it's fair. Yeah, let's listen to the circus received part. wasn't the way that Look at him. I would have liked it to have been received. I wasn't prepared for how much this unconscious idea of the role I should play as a woman and the role he should play as a man would affect our relationship. I was not prepared for that. Rami, let me say something to you. There's some fear. There's some fear with being direct with my wife. I want to be heard. I want to be heard. I want to say this one thing that I've been trying to say and have her hear me. I'll make it very plain. I need love from you, respect. I need food and I just need clean clothes. Okay. Okay. Hold up. I need love. I need respect. I'm sure she's giving you that. You need food and clean clothes. You don't know how to make food. You don't know how to take your stuff. I, you, they got these cute little portable washers you can have in the house. I got one just the other day. It's the cutest thing. I'll share it with you when I, I'm going to experiment. I want it for my bras, my panties and my nylons. And I want it for my dresses and my blouses. And it's like this portable little thing. You can get it on Amazon. He don't know how to have clean clothes. I already love you the way I see it. Look, I love you if I'm here with you, first of all. I respect you. You could tell how much I respect you based on what I, the way I watch my tone. I watch my volume. I don't call you out of your name. And I'm not yelling and screaming at you. To me, that's respect. Okay? And you want clean clothes and you, what, what, what? Oh, child, I can't be so bothered. Like I said, honey, if these men want you to have their children, then of course he should be prepared to be a provider. And you know, I'm 50, 50, but when you are having babies for this man, then yes, he's going to have to make sure that he has enough money. So when you go on maternity leave, he could pay the rent, the food. He could pay for everything. You're on maternity leave. So now you have to use what money you get. Because you know when you're on maternity leave, you still get a certain amount of money. Maybe not your full pay. And you use that money for yourself. Because you got to buy clothes. You got to still try to look pretty while you're pregnant. Because why? Men are very shallow. Men are very superficial. Men are visuals. We know that's drummed into our head. Throughout life, men are visual, men are visual creatures, visual, visual. Okay. Well, the vision costs money, sweetheart. I have to have money for my hair to get myself, especially if you are more refined and you're a seasoned woman, you have to put forth more effort in your appearance. That costs money, sweetheart. You want me not to get fat after having this kid. I need to have a gym membership. And maybe a personal trainer because I need to stay motivated and inspired. And we all know that trying to go to the gym and stay motivated, that's hard. But when you have a personal trainer, they're going to whip you back into shape. You know, that costs money. Now, when I get off maternity leave, we got to go oh, get a nanny up in here. Because I'm going back to work. Why? Because I'm not brain dead. God didn't create me to be a brain dead woman. I'm a business woman. I'm good at it. I'm smart. I'm successful. Anything that I apply my mind to, you can bet your last dollar it's, it's done. God gave each and every one of us an anointing, meaning a special gift. And if God gave a woman a special gift to be a business woman and she's shrewd and she's smart as hell, and she knows how to will and deal, and she got a hustler inside of her, it is what it is. I'm not trying to sit here and be nobody's baby mama and a wife only. You go half on the nanny, I'll go half on the nanny. Just like the Proverbs 31 woman, maid servants, baby, and, and it says servants, plural. So that means she had more than one. She wasn't doing all of that cooking and cleaning and slaving and all of this crap. Just her? No. 
So if a man cannot afford these things, you need to stay up out of a woman's face and you need to be focusing on your finance, building yourself up spiritually so you can be a spiritual leader, number one. And secondly, a provider. That's your job. That's your God-given assignment. That ain't what women get, gave you or what the world says. Forget society and the world. What did God assign you? What did God say is a man's responsibility. You're supposed to protect. You're supposed to provide. You're supposed to teach and you're supposed to lead. You can't lead me if you're not being submissive to Christ because the Bible also speaks about that. Also, if you want a sex, a, a successful relationship this day and age, even in the millennial and this crazy world that it is, you have got to do things God's way, Jesus Christ's way. Because if you don't, I don't have to speak. I don't have to say anymore. You already see how it ends up. You see how it turns out. Let me show you how it turns out. These are Facebook support groups for married women. Okay, these are women who are married, but look at all the support groups that they have to have. Just go on Facebook. Don't take my word for it. Take a look at this. Let me scroll down a little bit more so you can see some more. Hold on. Yeah. Take a look at all of this. This is what happens when you don't do things Jehovah and Jesus Christ way. Look at all these different support groups. And this is just a few that I listed. You have all these women who are married and these are the most miserable women and the most lonely women on this planet. So like they say, don't believe the hype. Take a look at these support groups. I was shocked and I joined each and every one of them where I looked into them and I read the comments. Actually, I use this so I could get my clients. That's how I get my clients because I have a lot of women. I direct them to my YouTube channel and then they get my email and my contact information and they be blowing up my email, text messaging me, setting up phone calls. This is why Sheila True Love is a very busy woman because of things like this. After they come on my channel and they take a listen to what I have to say, I'm blowing up when it comes to uh, being an advice coach. So ladies... Don't buy into this nonsense where people are trying to convince you that if you're not married, something must be wrong with you or you're dysfunctional or you're crazy. These days, honey, if you're married, you're into S&M. What is S&M? Sadistic masochism. Yeah. You love being, what's the opposite of peace? The opposite of peace is drama, chaos, abuse, Stress, anxiety. Why would I want a ball and chain? Someone who places limits on what you can and cannot do. Come on, who wants to sign up for that? I mean, something's got to be wrong with you. And you have got to have severe mental illness. And you should be in a psychiatric unit or a psychiatric hospital anytime you want to keep signing up for that. Me, I'm a woman who I'm single. No, I'm not single, sweetheart. I'm happily single. Because, honey, the phone calls, the texts, and the emails that I get, I am so happy that I made the decision that I made. And in closing, women should never be expected to give up on their dreams and their goals just to be married or for motherhood. That's foolish. And Jesus keeps telling you, be wise, my child. Make my heart rejoice. Make wise decisions.